Hello everyone, Mike Barber here. Remember this program is tape delayed for many reasons, but you will see it still alive and well. Men, women worshiping, men, women listening to the life changing word of God. It'll touch your heart in many ways. The Mike Barber Ministries, this is our church. This is where we live. Enjoy it because you will be blessed. Oh, they may promise you, if you do this, you're going to make a living. You're going to get some cash. I'm telling you, you're going to come out on the worst end. So Jonah gets in the boat as they go. The ship comes out. The winds are tossing back and forth. And the Bible says that the, the, the guys that were the mariners, these were seasoned mariners. They knew, they knew how to handle a storm. You see, some of them folks you were running with, they said, man, you need to be in my game. You need to go with me because we know how to handle the troubled waters of this place. And the Bible says that it got so bad that they began, it was a cargo ship, that they began to toss things overboard that they were being paid to deliver, trying to lighten the boat so it wouldn't sink. Anytime you got, I'm going to flip the script a little bit. Anytime you got somebody on your boat that don't belong there, you're going to have to get rid of something and try to, and you will lose something that actually did belong there. Those men were trying to just pay their livelihood. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't mean, they were in the, oh, y'all don't know what this is like, in the wrong place at the wrong time. But the Bible says that the, they begin to throw stuff overboard. They begin to throw, they've been trying to figure out what's going on. But it also says that Jonah went, go ahead and read in your Bible, Jonah went into the bottom of the ship and went to sleep. He like, if I'm on die, I'm on die. I ain't going to Nineveh. I ain't going. No, you ain't going to make me find some other preacher to do it. I ain't doing it. And so, they all start casting lies. They draw on straws to see, okay, we got to figure out who the problem here. Everybody call to your God. Cry out to your God. And they looked at Jonah. Why ain't you crying? You asleep. He's hiding. And then finally they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. They said, okay, what'd you do? He said, okay, look, I'm a Hebrew. And, um, um, well, this is going on because of me. And I can just see one of the dudes going, you think? Because it ain't none of us. And then the Bible says they realized that he was running from the presence of the Lord. Even those that you are running with that are in a wrong gang, they know that the presence of the real God shows up. When I walked in, I'm going to tell you, today was the first time I have ever been in a prison in my life. But when I walked on these grounds, I knew that there was a presence here that is not what is reported on the news or what is reported. I had friends tell me about this place. Let me tell you something. Telford Unit has the presence of Almighty God, not only in the house, but on the grounds. And no weapon formed against this place shall prosper. I'm sorry I'm getting loud, but I'm a preacher. So, he said, I tell you what you guys ought to do. He said, if you will just toss me overboard, if you would just get, if you just get me out of the picture, everything else will smooth out for you. And the Bible said that they rode, they said, no, 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 we can't do that. They rode even harder. Anytime you're outside of God's will and keeping somebody in your crew that shouldn't be in your crew, you're going to have to row even harder. You're going to have to push harder. It ain't going to flow as easy. If you're on the inside or the outside, it don't matter. There are people on the outside that you don't need in your crew, and that's the reason why some of you are on the inside, because you had somebody on the outside that wasn't on your team. But the Bible says that they finally said, okay, preacher man, we're going to toss you overboard. And when they tossed him overboard, the Bible says that the sea, raging sea, Settle down. But then it says, but God had prepared a great fish. See, what you thought was a setback, some of you came here and you thought this was a setback. You've been making bad choices. You did some stupid stuff. If you had to go over again, you wouldn't do it, but you did it anyway, and now you're here. 
And you're saying, oh, my life is over. No, I'm telling you what, God had a setup. God knew when you was out there screwing around, messing up, that a Mike Barber was going to come here and tell you to get your act together. And there's a Jesus that loves you and a God that will save you if you'll just obey. <laughs> Am I doing okay? But when the, when the, the Bible says he prepared the well, the well came up and swallowed him. And for three days and three nights, he was inside the belly of a well. Now, I don't, now, I understand that he was talking about some of y'all, you know, what y'all smelled like before they brought the soap. And he was making fun of me earlier because I guess I need some of the soap too. It's one thing to not take a shower for a couple of days. It's another thing to be in the belly of an acidic fish. I mean, he's down there, his, his skin's all getting bubbly. He's stinking. No one telling what else that swell might have eaten. I mean, it's awful. And then the Bible says after three days, Jonah repented. Jonah changed his tune, and the Bible says God spoke to the fish. I was talking to somebody here today and said, I want God to talk to me. God, to tell me, tell you something. I don't care if you're in here or out there. It doesn't matter. If God can speak to a stupid fish, he can talk to you. Look at, I was going to say, look at your neighbor and say, if God speaks to a stupid fish, but I don't want that to happen there. So the Bible says that Jonah went, and he did as the, Lord, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. God will talk to you again. You may have messed up once, twice, three times. In my case, 436,000. But thank God that he ain't give up on me yet. Aren't you glad? But then the Bible says that he went to Nineveh and he started preaching and he started telling everybody to repent. And, that, and you know, some people get this idea that he's walking in in his three-piece suit and he's looking all nice, just got off his television program saying, you need to repent for the Lord is at hand. No, dude, this guy coming out, he got snot coming out his nose. He got, he, he got fish guts hanging out of him. And he's telling everybody, you need to repent. You tell me you won't repent with that looking at you. You see, sometimes God will use the junk that's been hanging on you to cause somebody else to turn around. You ain't got to be ashamed anymore. He's already redeemed you. Don't be ashamed. But then the next thing you know, he gets mad, and he goes, and this is what I want to tell you. See, see some of you, y'all, listen, y'all going to obey. Y'all going to walk in love. You're going to be pure. But here's the thing I want you to get is that you can read it for yourself. Jonah goes to God after they've had revival. Nineveh has repented. People have been turned on to God. He gets mad and crawls up under a tree. He gets mad. He says, Lord, this ain't right. Because you know the reason why I didn't want to go to Nineveh in the first place. Because I knew you was a gracious God. I knew you were a merciful God. And I knew if I went down there and I told them how good you were and had told them that you wanted to change their lives or you were going to come kick their rear end, I knew that they were going to repent because you, I knew you'd forgive them because you're a good God. And that's why I didn't want to go because I knew you would save them. The reason he didn't want to go to Nineveh because Jonah was a biblical racist. He didn't like those folks. And God says, you know what? I don't care what you don't like. I'm going to use who I'm going to use. Mercy has a way of using something in your life you didn't want to use. But then when you realize that if we were all skipped back to the flesh, we would all look the same, bleed the same. I told you all today I was growing up, everybody thought, I mean, I, don't, I do not sing like a white guy. I realize that. I sing like a white guy that wished he was black. Because y'all got some soul about you. Y'all got, y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true. You sing, right? You sing? You know how to hold a microphone? Can this other mic over here work? Can I get this other mic? What do you know? You, what songs do you know? How great. You want to do a like, You want to do a Church of Christ style? Okay. Can he come up here? Come here, come here, come here. Yeah. All right. What's your name? I'm Karate. What was that? Karate, like cry and tape. Karate? Yeah, not karate, huh? but karate. Hold on a sec. Okay, karate. All right. All right, karate, I'm Chopper. All right. All right, ready? We're going to do, do this duet, all right? We're going to do a duet? I'm going to do the first verse. Oh, I thought I was in charge. And then you're going to do the second verse. I thought, okay. And we're going to harmonize through the rest of the yeah. song. <laughs> and the choir gonna help us out. All right, y'all okay. got it. All right, go ahead. Listen. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great 
is our God, and all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, say it again, just like that again. Say. Come on, how great, come on, y'all, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Listen. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. H to H is stands, and time is in His hand. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The God had three and one. sneak peek of what heaven's going to be like. <laughs> Woo! My goodness! My, 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 my. Wow, 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 wow. Can I sing another song? All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get it up here in just a minute fast. fast. Uh, uh, go ahead and play number 30. No, number... Number 29 right quick. Before you do, before you do, before you do. I like what he did today. Heads up, eyes open, looking around. Whether you believe it or not, God has big plans for everybody here. There's not a single person here that was an accident in God's plan. Every one of us, every one of you. 
And you may have thought along the way you have messed up and just screwed up so royally that God couldn't straighten it out. Let me tell you something. God has a way of taking every mess and every shattered piece and putting it together and making a masterpiece. You know, we all keep going on, time keeps going. We all going to die. Life, no one gets out alive. But now whether you're in here or out there, it doesn't matter. There are folks that are walking the streets today, but they're in prison in their minds. And there are some people in here that are more free tonight than you have ever been in your life. And it's all because of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus said it like this. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Then are you my disciples. I always want to play football. And when I, still, when I got Madden football on Xbox, or actually I think back then, I, I, I think it may have been Sega, I'm not sure. That shows you how, how old I am. I was playing it, actually the first one I was playing was Tech Mobile on Nintendo. When you gave it to Bo Jackson and he did that little move and he was gone for 80 yards. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but what I really liked about it was I liked when I was able to get the playbook and I could design my own plays because I thought I was smarter than John Madden. But what I found out was when I started designing my own plays, my offense began to suck. But when I went back and started using the plays that were designed by the masters, I, I started winning. Some of you have been designing your own plays, and it ain't been working. But tonight's the night you're going to change your life and turn it around because you're going to make a commitment tonight that you are going to be a follower of Christ. And not only a follower, you're going to look at his word and you're going to find out what he has to say about you. Because the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Don't let the world define you by because you're in here. I'm telling you, the reason why you're in here tonight is because God finally had a place to get your attention. I challenge you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And say, Lord, take my life and do something with it. Because up until now, I ain't been making too many good decisions on some things. Decisions get us to where we are, but decisions will get us to where we want to go to. This next song needs to be your prayer. Oh, to Jesus. You can turn it down a little bit. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love, love and trust Him in. His presence. I don't care if I'm walking in the barracks or walking in my cell or walking in my bedroom. I will daily live. Because you see, I surrender all. I surrender all. Right there where you sit, say it. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Mm -hmm. All to Jesus. I, I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures they're all forsaken take me Jesus take Surrender. 
so all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go. Our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially, but our partners, they do. They send us, even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon once again.